Like, oh, women are different and weird. I'm gonna do that too. First thing I don't understand. <laughs> when I got married, I learned something very quick. I'm never gonna ask my wife where she wants to go for dinner. Whenever I do, ruins the night, we just get in a fight. So men, I started doing this. When I get home, I find my wife, I go up to her and I excitedly say, hey, guess where I'm taking you for dinner tonight? And whatever she says, that's where we go. <laughs> A life hack. <laughs> life hacks are things that make your life easier, but because it's your wife, it's a wife hack. <laughs> now, I love my wife. She is the most amazing person in my world, and I, I wouldn't be as good a person now if it weren't for her. There's a lot of comedians that will poke fun and they'll make fun of their significant others and wives, and they'll be like, oh, women are different and weird. I'm gonna do that too. First thing I don't understand. <laughs> First thing, holiday candles. You know what I'm talking about? The Christmas scented candles? The ones that are scented like evergreen, balsam, holly jolly gumdrop nonsense. First thing my wife does after Christmas ends, she boxes them all up, she runs and she puts them in a closet in the basement where we can't find them next year because that's a fun game. <laughs> First thing she does after boxing up all the Christmas scented candles, goes out and buys all new scented candles. Why can't we use Christmas candles all year round? Are we worried we're gonna have guests come over in July? They're gonna walk in and smell them and be like, oh, what day is it? Is it Christmas? I've done zero shopping. Second thing I don't get, kitschy little wooden home signs. You know, the wooden signs that have paragraphs of sayings etched into them. You know, the thing you wanna read as soon as you enter someone's house. They have sayings like, home is where the heart is. And a house is just a house until it's filled with people that you love, then it's a home. Who are these signs for? They're not for me. If they were, they would be honest. And they would say things like, home is where my farts are. And a house is just a house until I get there, immediately take off my pants, and then it's a home. One thing my wife and I, we love to do, is we will watch horror movies together. We love watching horror movies. She'll sit there, eyes glued to the TV, wide open, just throwing back gobs of popcorn, all up until the point in a horror movie when a small animal like a dog appears. As soon as a dog appears in a horror movie, my wife will snap up and she will go, no! <laughs> If they touch one hair on that poor defenseless animal's head, I'm gonna stop watching this horror movie. Well, luckily, honey, the hockey mask killer only kills adults, teenagers, super small children, but has a soft spot for shih tzus. And that's why you watch horror movies. You want to see the mutilations, the decapitations. But I guess it would be weird if, before watching a horror movie, you were with someone, and behind you, you heard them say, I just want to see how many dogs they kill. <laughs> it's gonna get rough. Rough. <laughs> While watching these horror movies, we realize something, especially if you watch 90s horror movies, where you're supposed to guess who the killer is. Like, they'll introduce a, a batch of teens at the beginning, and it's like, oh, which one of these is the killer? 
Never at the end of one of these is the killer revealed to be the friend who has the shape and body image of someone like me. <laughs> Think about it. At the end of the movie, the killer's never taken off their mask and they're like, and the killer was me the whole time. And the teenagers are like, y'all, we knew it was you, bro. <laughs> you really uh, stretch and fill out that black robe you're wearing? Uh, you have like 80 pounds on all of us. <laughs> also earlier, when you were chasing us through the woods with that ax, you were breathing pretty heavy. <laughs> At one point, we saw you lean up against a tree. Are you okay, bro? <laughs> now, you all now know who I am, but I don't know who any of you are. So, on the count of three, I would like everybody to say their name. Okay? Great. One, two, three. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. <laughs> By a round of applause, how many people have clapped their hands before? <laughs> now, okay, those two are dad jokes, and I get to legally tell them now, because just last week, my wife and I welcomed our daughter, our first child, into our home. She was born four months ago, but just last week, we welcomed her inside. <laughs> We said, get on in here, stranger. Because that's what babies are. Babies are strangers that spend all of your money and poop all day, every day. But it was good when I finally had a child because my friends always said, Ricky, you have a dad bod. <laughs> Luckily, now that I have a kid, I think I have a father figure. <laughs> Also, whenever anybody sees our baby, people always immediately just want to come up to my wife and I, look at our daughter and say, oh, she's the spitting image of her dad. <laughs> and to be fair, I do drool a lot. <laughs> and it's cute, it's okay for them to say that she looks like me, our baby daughter looks like her dad now. But oh, help her <laughs> if when she's 16, if she looks like this with a wig, <laughs> ain't nobody asking her to prom. <laughs> I was born and raised in Kentucky, went to high school in Kentucky, went to Campbell County High School, where our mascot was the camel. <laughs> We were the Campbell County Camels <laughs> in Kentucky. <laughs> Our colors, purple and gold. You know, like a camel. <laughs> I'm all for alliteration. I just wish that our mascot could have been something like a tad bit more intense, like the uh, Campbell County Canines or the Campbell County Cobras or the Campbell County Cougars. And I'm not talking wildcat, I'm talking like older woman that preys on young men aggressively. <laughs> That's intense. It got so bad at our football games. This is how our announcer used to bring us out to the field. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your Campbell County Camels. Watch out, they spit. <laughs> I have two older brothers, oldest brother John, second oldest brother Eric. Eric is gay, out of the closet, lives in Kentucky. Don't worry, he's safe. <laughs> he came out while he was going to college in Florida and we were visiting him. We were trying to think of the most Kentucky thing we could do as a family. So we took him to a flea market. <laughs> And while we were there, he took my mom aside and he said, Mom, I have something to tell you. I'm gay. To which my mom took a deep breath and replied, Whatever you do, do not tell your dad and brother. This will ruin their vacation. 
So flash forward, now I'm going to college. I'm going to college to become a secondary education English major, which is a real long way to say underpaid high school teacher. <laughs> Two years in, I decide I wanna change my major. I wanna do theater, I wanna do something like this. So I asked my out of the closet brother, Eric, to help me tell my parents. So at our regular Sunday dinner with the family, we finished up, my brother stood up and he said, mom and dad, Ricky has something he wants to tell you. <laughs> to which my dad hung his head and said, you're not gay too, are you? And my brother said, nope, but close. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that before I got married, this is how my mom would talk about me to strangers. She would have a family photo on her person's on the ready and she'd pull it out and she'd be like, this is our son, John. He gave us our first grandchild. This is our son, Eric. He's a doctor. And this, this is our son, Ricky. He has health insurance. <laughs> but when I got married, the, uh, the first thing I learned is that you get way too many photos back of the reception. If you've gotten married, you know this. The only thing wedding photos are good for is if you've ever argued with someone that you're a good dancer. Wedding photos will prove you wrong. <laughs> The other thing I learned is we got like a thousand photos back of just the reception. And I hate to sound like an old man, but they all came back on a stick that you plug into your computer. Like a thousand photos. I realized we're never gonna have physical photos again. Like my dad has the last known living photo of my great great grandfather from World War I in his army fatigues. Never gonna have that again. My great-great-grandchildren, they're gonna be like, on this hologram wristwatch, <laughs> here are about a thousand photos of your great-great-grandmother doing a thing called duck face. <laughs> and here's about 400 more of her with long dog ears and a long tongue. <laughs> Apparently we used to be able to change into animals. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm not much of a drinker. Um, I don't know a lot of drinking terminology, like uh, IPA. Not sure what it stands for. It could stand for I'm perfectly average based on the people I've seen drink it. <laughs> so I met my wife on a dating website and it worked for us. I, I saw her profile. If you've ever done online dating, you go there and you see a bunch of text information, but the first thing you look at is the picture and you only get one picture. And I saw my wife's picture and she looked beautiful. And the first thing that drew me in were her eyes. Like just by seeing her picture in her eyes, I felt she had a personality that I just had to meet her, had to ask her on a date. Aww. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I was like, you have to take a chance. Maybe it won't work out. You ask her out and then just you know, roll the dice. And then I clicked on that picture to see the rest of her pictures. And she only had one more picture. And in that one, she was wearing a hat. And I have a theory about women who wear hats. The bigger the hat, the crazier the woman. <laughs> and this was a fedora. So like mid-level crazy. <laughs> now, I thought that this would be a cute story to tell my wife on our one year anniversary. It was not. <laughs> she got mad. <laughs> she got mad and she snapped, oh, oh, I'm wearing a hat now. Do I look crazy? Do I look crazy? <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> it's midnight, we're in bed, take off the sombrero. <laughs> I don't have a great singing voice, but I like to think about like big time rock stars. 
they had to have real nine to five jobs before they made it big. So think how weird would it have been that if like Brian Johnson, the lead singer of ACDC, was your server at a restaurant <laughs> before he became the lead singer of ACDC. You'd be sitting there and he'd come up to the table and he'd be like, welcome to the restaurant. <laughs> we got hot soup and bread rolls, yeah. <laughs> or you're at a grocery store and Dave Matthews was bagging your groceries. Would you like paper or plastic? <laughs> I put the bread on top of the eggs. Take these groceries. <laughs> or if like, what if some of our favorite actors became singers? Like what if Sean Connery in the 80s is like, I'm an 80s singer now, and he released the single, you can dance if you want to. <laughs> or you can leave your friends behind. <laughs> Cause if your friends won't dance, and if they don't dance, well, there ain't no friends of mine. <laughs> now, people after shows have sometimes asked me, Ricky, how do you come up with what celebrities you can do and can't do? And I tell them, I used to do the voices for my wife. All up until one day when she said, and I quote, Stop. It's 6 a.m. It's too early for Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> but if you remember to the beginning of the show, I have a baby now. And babies cannot talk. So now I make her listen. So now every night I dramatically read to her a nursery rhyme read by one of my favorite celebrities, like Sylvester Stallone. They're like, yo, 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 your boy, like gently down this dream. <laughs> merrily, 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 you know, like life is but a dream, you know. <laughs> or Sir Alan Rickman from Harry Potter, Professor Snape. I'm a little tea potter. <laughs> Short and stout. Here is my hander, here is my spout. <laughs> Norm MacDonald. I'm McDonald and I'm farm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get on that farm. You know, you know what I'm McDonald and yeah, I'm McDonald and he had some animals. And I guess that's not weird. It's a farm. You should have some animals. <laughs> Michael Caine. There was your boy who had a dog. <laughs> and Bingo was his name out. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do we just anti pasty go round and round? Round and round and round and round. <laughs> Seth Rogen. <laughs> um, twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> uh, how I wonder what you are <laughs> up above the sky so high. <laughs> high. <laughs> John C. Riley from Wreck It Ralph. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds away. Then like along came a spider that sat down beside her, and Miss Muffet's like, you know, I think I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> and final nursery rhyme, this is one that my baby definitely doesn't understand. Uh, this is all of the US presidents in my lifetime, from 1985 to now, dramatically reading, one potato, two potato. One potato, two potato, three potato, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato more. <laughs> uh, eight potato, uh, nine potato. Team potato, uh, okay, we got all the potatoes. We got the best potatoes. We're gonna grow them locally. We got no collusion with these potatoes. They're gonna be huge, they're gonna be tremendous. You guys 
guys have been awesome tonight. You guys are so, so, so cool for coming out here. Um, I got one impression I got to leave you with. And this is an impression that everybody can do if you want to spend five years working on it. <laughs> this is my impression of a penguin looking for his wallet. 